Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're going to be taking a look at some standalone VR systems here on the channel over the next couple of weeks. And I got this one in the other day from Lenovo. This is their uh, new Mirage Solo headset that runs with Google Daydream, which is essentially Android. And you might have heard of Daydream before. It's something that works with some higher end Android powered smartphones. Uh, this one doesn't require a phone because the screen and all the guts to make this work is built right into the headset. And this one offers some degree of room scale where you can actually move around a little bit and get a more natural feel to your VR versus just kind of a static position that a lot of the phone-based devices provide. So we'll take a look and see uh, how much room scale we can do with this device here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before I uploaded it. So let's get into it now and see what this is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The cost on this one is $399, which incidentally is the same price as the Oculus Rift, the one that plugs into a computer. Uh, but of course, the Rift requires a computer capable of delivering VR, where this one will give you the full VR experience in one package. It is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, so it's a little more powerful than the new Oculus Go that costs about $200. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and it also has a micro SD card slot right here for plugging things into it. Now, it's essentially running Android, but it boots up to the Google Daydream interface, so essentially it is just a VR device. It doesn't run uh, Android apps that are not designed for the Daydream system here. So your app choices will be a bit limited. We'll step through the uh, App Store in a little bit on this. Inside, it has a 5.5-inch Quad HD display that's 2560 by 1440. It is IPS, and it runs at about 75 frames per second. Uh, by comparison, the PC-based VR systems typically run around 90 frames per second, so you will have a slightly smoother experience on the PC side, but overall I've been pretty pleased with the optical quality on the lenses here, and uh, the head tracking really does uh, feel quite nice on this one. Now what separates this one from the other standalone systems I've seen at the moment are these two cameras in the front here, and this is how it kind of does that uh, room scale thing. They call it world sense tracking, and uh, what it's going to do is map the environment around you and using the optical uh, information it's getting, it's able to actually figure out where your head is without having to hook up any kind of sensors around the room. So I have an HTC Vive and I've got these two light posts at different corners of the room so it can track me when I'm moving around. This doesn't require anything, so you can put this thing on and start moving your head around. If you have a VR game that requires dodging and stuff, it'll be able to track your uh, position in space. But they very significantly limit uh, how far you can walk before it turns off the image and tells you to walk back to where you were. And they uh, do that as a safety measure to prevent you from walking into things around your room, I would imagine. But it actually works very well, and you will see how well it works in a minute. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery inside. Uh, they say that's good for about two and a half hours of continuous usage, and I would agree with that. To be honest with you, by the time you get to two and a half hours, your eyes are really feeling a bit strained and tired, at least mine do. So uh, I don't really, haven't really been able to leave one of these things on my head uh, for that long, but you will get about two and a half hours out of it, probably enough to watch a movie and maybe a couple other things afterward. Weighs about 1.42 pounds, or 645 kilograms. Uh, they did try to make it very easy to adjust, so what you do is just kind of slide it over your head like so, and you can uh, adjust things with this little dial here in the back. I did find it was a little hard to get a good, comfortable fit on this initially. Uh, they did add the ability to also uh, adjust kind of a little telescoping thing here on the front. So there's a button on the bottom here that you can push, and you can uh, adjust out uh, where the headset uh, fits on your face. So if you have glasses on or something, you can make some adjustments here to get it uh, to fit the way you'd like it to fit. But it is a little front heavy, just given that the screen and all the, uh, the battery and all the stuff that drives it are in this front section here. But overall, I haven't found it to be all that uncomfortable compared to other VR systems I've used. It is just a little front heavy, and most of the weight is right here resting on your face. Another thing that I noticed is I was often getting some light bleed coming in from the sides here, so it doesn't really fit around my face all that well. It would have been nice maybe to have something to uh, tighten up this section around your face to get a better fit to block out some of the ambient light coming in. But overall, comfort has been okay. 
And again, this takes a little bit of adjustment to finally get it to a position that works best for you. Not much for ports on this one. You've got a USB Type-C port over here for charging it. Your micro SD card goes over there. On the other side, you've got the uh, power button and standby button. Uh, what's nice about this though, when you take it off, it immediately puts itself to sleep. So you don't really have to think about pushing the button here. Uh, when it gets taken off, it knows to shut down things. And then when you put it back on, it very quickly boots back up again. And here are your volume controls on this side, uh, but it doesn't have any speakers built in. It has a headphone jack here that you connect headphones to. It does come with a pair in the box, but you can obviously use whatever you want. And then it has a little controller for navigating around your virtual world here. And uh, this is pretty much a Google Daydream controller, the same one I have on the other system that I reviewed a few weeks ago. You've got a capacitive touch area here along with two buttons and the volume control here as well. And uh, most of what you do with this will be uh, involving the controller here and navigating around. This does have to get charged up separately. It does last a good long time, but uh, you will need to plug it in and charge it with the USB Type-C connector on there as well. So let's take a look at the Daydream interface. We're going to touch on it briefly because I covered it signif you know, in a significant amount of detail uh, on another video, which you can find linked down below. And then we'll see how well this room tracking thing works on it. So here we are on the main interface for the Google Daydream system. And again, this is something we covered a few weeks ago, so I have a lot more detail in that other video. But uh, basically what you do here is navigate with the controller. So as I wave it around here, you can see the controller showing up in space. Uh, unlike the Oculus and the HTC Vive, the, ha uh, the headset here can't see the remote. So if you do find your remote going a little off center there, you can hold down a button here and recenter it. Now, it might be looking a little jumpy to you on screen. Uh, I am Chromecasting this to get the screen capture working in real time, so it's going to look a little more laggy than what I am experiencing right now in the headset. I found the head tracking to be very accurate and uh, really close, but not as good as my HTC Vive, which again runs at a faster frame rate. And I wanted to start off with some of the things that you can do with this new head tracking feature that's integrated into this uh, standalone headset. So we're going to take a look at uh, this game here called uh, Blade Runner Revelations, and we're going to just restart the game here. It's got a really neat opening sequence that I think makes good use of this uh, technology here. So we just have to wait for uh, things to catch up here. There's a little uh, opening uh, sequence here, and we start off inside this uh, flying car here, and uh, what's neat about this is that I can really look around in here and not just turn my head, but I can get closer to details. And I couldn't do this on uh, another Daydream system we looked at recently because it didn't have this head tracking built in. So I can, for example, get a closer look at the screen here. Uh, you can see everything else coming by me. This is all in 3D to my eyes. It looks really cool. Um, and it's certainly giving me some uh, motion, uh, feeling of motion here as we're flying around. But uh, this works really well, and I'm surprised how well it works given that it doesn't have a sensor uh, to track the headset in real time. It's doing this all from the cameras here, and uh, it's very well done for a standalone system. And again, just the ability just to kind of look at things more closely and get a feel for everything and see the dimension. Even of these switches, I can see they are... Uh, have, they have some dimension to them and that they're in front of that joystick. And uh, overall, again, I'm really just quite pleased with uh, how, all, how this all works. And uh, when you get down to the ground here, it's going to transition to this alleyway. And now I'm going to uh, switch my position here. I'm going to stand up and walk over into a different part of the room and to show you how some of this stuff works when you're standing up and how it might compare to uh, one of the more expensive PC-based systems. So we're going to try now to do a little bit of walking and see what we can do inside the world here. So I'm going to switch back to our two-up view, and I can actually walk forward. But as I do, you'll see it fogs out. And this is a safety measure to prevent me from walking into things that I can't see while I'm inside the headset. It would be cool if it could maybe overlay what you have in the room around you, because it does have cameras on the front to maybe guide you from uh, walking into stuff. But uh, right now, they kind of limit the range in which you can walk around in here before things go uh, foggy on you. But what is cool though, again, because you have this head tracking, you can really take a look at some of the finer details on the ground, for example, or maybe if you're uh, over by one of the shelves here, you can do something with that. And this is not something you can do typically with the, uh, the Google Daydream system on a smartphone because it doesn't have this head tracking. So you do get the ability to do some of this uh, room scale kind of stuff that uh, you can't typically do on a PC, but they do really limit uh, how far you can move around here while you're standing up. And again, that is for safety. 
but there is a setting where you can disable these safety controls, kind of like turning off the safeties on the holodeck back in the Star Trek days. And I can actually walk through this scene. Look how cool this is. The graphics are getting a little mixed up here. It's not anticipating me doing this, but uh, I've got a lot of motion and movement here that I can make now. I can take a closer look at some of this stuff that I couldn't do before. And again, the game isn't really anticipating me doing this, but I am able here to walk around. I'm just trying to be careful not to actually hit anything because I can't see what's going on. But I can really make my way through this world here pretty decently. And uh, as you can see here, we've got a lot of potential here. So I'd love to see what they can do with this to maybe give people more freedom of movement because I am uh, really able to walk around this scene here pretty freely here without uh, having to have any kind of sensor around to track my movement. And it's actually working pretty decently. I'm really quite pleased with what they've put together here. But ultimately, this system, like all the other ones out there, uh, lacks a real killer app. There's a lot of fun experiences that are kind of short-lived, uh, but ultimately, it doesn't really have anything all that compelling that I think makes this a must-purchase. But I think if you are looking to mess around in VR and uh, want the full experience of room scale but don't want to invest in a very expensive PC to make that happen, uh, this will give you some of that experience. And as you saw, you could actually walk around a pretty uh, decent range here and have that motion track successfully. And I would imagine if there were apps that were designed to allow that kind of walkthrough beyond what we were pushing that other one to do outside of its design specs, uh, you might be able to do some really cool stuff with this. And uh, for a mobile processor, this is a good experience. It is, you know, 400 bucks, but uh, like I said earlier, you can spend that much and just get a headset and still need to have the computer attached. This one gives you the whole thing. And uh, there's a good amount of apps in there, but again, uh, nothing really all that groundbreaking just yet. But the media experience on these are pretty fun. They've got apps where you can kind of replicate a movie theater and get that feeling of having a huge screen in front of you. And they've got the seats and people next to you and stuff. That's a fun experience. Uh, our sponsor here on the channel, Plex, has an app that also is a lot of fun to play with. You can use your Plex server uh, with your Daydream system. I did a video on that about a month or two ago, so you may want to check that out. And YouTube has a pretty cool experience where you can watch your favorite YouTubers in a large screen format. And they've got a, a new 180 degree camera system that I am looking at right here. Let me get that started here. And uh, you can't appreciate what I'm seeing here right now, but this is a 180 degree uh, 3D movie. And I'm looking at myself here, uh, getting the studio set up in three dimensions. And if you've got Google Cardboard and a phone, you can experience this as well in 3D. And I'll put a link to this on my extras channel down below. And uh, this is kind of a fun experience. I'm able to kind of look around my uh, set here and uh, get a view of this little video that I did. And what's nice is that the uh, viewer's attention with these 180 degree videos is uh, limited to just what's in front of the camera. So you can really, I think, do some creative stuff and uh, be able to keep the viewers kind of engaged with it. And those videos will start up automatically on YouTube. So for the 2D videos, it'll just put them up on a big screen. But when you go into one of these 180 videos, it'll give you uh, a different experience. And the 360 videos are also up there on YouTube that you can check out. And I'm just noticing my face has got red marks from where I've been wearing this. I'm probably wearing it a little too tight. Uh, so you will have, again, some comfort issues with this thing as you're playing with it. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at, a, at the camera that I used to shoot that video uh, coming up a little bit later. This is their new VR180 camera called the Mirage Camera. And what you do here is just start it up and it will record uh, two distinct images there. Again, 180 degree field of view. And you've got these really cool movies you can make with the camera. And this kind of goes together with this system. They actually sell this as a bundle, but you can get them individually. So we'll have a review of the camera uh, coming up very shortly and some of the things that you can do with that as well. So all in, they've really done a nice job with this system, specifically the ability to track the headset's position in 3D space. They call it world sense, but a lot of folks out there call it room scale. And you could probably do room scale with this thing. As you saw as I was walking around, that uh, game wasn't really designed again for uh, that much walking around, but it was letting us go through that space. And it was doing a very good job of figuring out uh, where I was based on where I was walking around the room. And it felt pretty natural as I was using it. Was it as good as the HTC Vive? No, but uh, this for $399 gives you the same functionality that you normally need a more expensive Vive and sensors for and a computer to run all of it. Uh, this thing is doing everything inside of the headset here without the need to tether to anything. And I think that might be something with some potential, uh, perhaps, if they allowed that uh, space in which you can walk around to be a little bit larger than what it is by default. So if you really want to play around with this, you might want to disable those safety controls 
bowls and uh, just make sure your room is nice and clear as you start wandering around. But I can see maybe even using this outside in a backyard where you don't have anything that you can walk into all that easily. It might be kind of fun to experiment with uh, what you can code yourself or perhaps what other developers start playing with uh, given that this does do, again, a really decent job of tracking its position in 3D space. And that is not something you can do uh, with the regular Google Daydream that you put a mobile phone into. You can't do all that stuff like we did in that, uh, that Blade Runner car, looking closely at the controls and whatnot. It just doesn't do it because it doesn't support it. And I don't believe the Oculus Go lets you do that either. So they've done a nice job. This is some pretty decent engineering here, and I'm eager to see what develops here. And ultimately, though, it's going to rely on what software makes its way to the Google Daydream slash Google Play Store. Let me know what you think down below in the comment stream, and I'll be hanging on to this for a couple of days. If anybody wants to do a follow-up or see more about it, uh, just let me know in the comments, and we'll try to do a little bit more there and be on the lookout for the 180 camera review we'll be doing in a couple of days. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.